many people have asked me to talk about the origins of the boule. Why would you use the term boule, black boule? Why y'all saying that? And why a lot of y'all who's making content is against them? Who are they? How did they get started? Why are they a problem to the black community? So let's talk about the black boule and why they have been a problem. We're gonna go through some things. So the black boule itself, and we put this up on the screen here, it was started in 1904. Now the first black Greek secret society was formed in Philadelphia by Dr. Henry Minton and his five colleagues, okay? Now, you see them on the screen. The BOULE is an acronym for Sigma Pi Phi, and it was formed to bring together a select group of educated black men and women fashioned after Yale Skull and Bones, right? Now the Skull and Bones is another secret society. You, many of you know about that. Now the Boule historically takes pride in having, providing leadership and service to black Americans during the Great Depression, World War I and II, and the Civil Rights Movement. So many people say, what could the Boule offer America's blacks in the 21st century? So joining the exclusive secret society offered advancement and perks to the select blacks in return for loyalty to his objectives. Now, they believe in the talented 10th. Now, any of you know about the talented 10th, that belief is the best and brightest of black America, which is 10%, should be running to 90%. It's a very elitist mindset, it's wrong. Just because you went to a school don't mean you're smart, because in this day and time, a master's degree don't guarantee you a job. You got a lot of debt, and if you're not smart with the right degree, you're gonna have a piece of paper, debt, and, don't have, and still gonna be broke, right? But this is just the process. So they say, while the majority of ordinary blacks were disenfranchised, you know, the Boule members, you know, they were doing good. This is historically, okay? Understand that. Boule members live a good life in America. They benefit off the system of racism and white supremacy, and they benefit off of your oppression and my oppression. They benefit from that. Understand all these ones, Jack and Jill and the Lynx and all these little societies like that. They all tied in. Understand that. Notice that all the ones, they, they all know each other. They hang with each other. They don't like other black people. You see the problem that the boule have with people like, us and uh, uh, Tariq and uh, Yvette and Tone and Jason Black and you know Professor Black Truth and anybody else that's speaking out right now against this is that we're not part of the boule. We're not part of the class and they look at us as a threat to destroy them because right now they don't really have much use anymore because with the talented 10th mentality, it says you must control the 90% and they lost control of the 90%. This is why you have Roland Martin and I gotta mention him because he is a Boule member. He told me it, out his own mouth on Twitter that he's part of the Boule. That's why you see him wearing all this African garb all the time. He's trying to convince you he's black, but we gonna get to that part later, um, why they do that, okay? So they said that the Archons, which is the male Boulay members, and their wives with 112 chapters make up the wealthiest group of black men and women on the planet. Now Archon means demon, but yet that's what they want to be a part of. And they like to keep that hidden. They say, but who does the Boulay really serve? Well, you know it don't serve the black community. Now it serves racism and white supremacy. And as long as the black boule member conform to the rules, the riches will be in abundance, if not come down the hatchet. And they state that black male is also part of the deal. Now the Masonic secret society has a pyramid style, like all the rest, you know about the Masons in that situation. As a lower ranks are kept from knowing what the upper ranks know. Now the early 20th century was a period of reconstruction. We put this up on the screen and you can see this is um, the Boulay uh, members, right? But I want you to notice on the screen, you have two white people and they're supposed to be part of the black Boulay. That's intentional why they're on there. Now, Marcus Garvey, the great Marcus Garvey, the greatest of all time, the, the father of modern and past Pan-Africanism. He laid down the blueprint, okay? 
So he had his back to Africa movement and it was in full swing. And Garvey represented genuine black leadership. In other words, Marcus Garvey represented that 90%. He represented the streets. He represented the grassroots. Now, W.E.B. Du Bois, the founding member of the New York chapter of the Boule, he stated that the Boule was created to keep the black professional away from Marcus Garvey. See, understand, any person that's trying to take black people out of racism, white supremacy, and the freedom, that is a threat to the black boule. Understand that the Joy Reads, and I'm not saying she's in the black boule, but usually when you see the professionals, they in the, or they clicked in somewhere with it, right? Now, they say the remaking of the House Negro was necessary to institute a group of blacks who had a vested interest in protecting the elite white system. And they say shortly after founding of the Boule was also Marcus Garvey's time of back to Africa movement when it reached a million plus people without television or radio. Do you understand how significant and how popular Marcus Garvey was at that time period? He had no TV, no radio, and yet he was popular. And he had no Twitter, no Facebook, no Instagram, no YouTube, no nothing, no messenger, anything, and yet he was that popular. Now, Du Bois emphasized, according to Steve Coakley, the importance to steal the black profession away from Garvey because an Afrocentric organization that articulated and captured a black professional would give white people no safe haven in the black community. So the Boule, the remaking of the House Negro, was necessary to build up a group of Negroes who had an investment in protecting the white system and produced by whites having stole this land. This is post reconstruction. Now taking away the articulate Negro, now designed to replace them with organized institutions to keep them away from self-improvement. So we find in the same period as the founding of the Boule, the founding of the four male Alpha Phi Alpha, Kappa Alpha Psi, Omega Psi Phi, and Phi Beta Sigma, and the four female Alpha Kappa Alpha, Alpha, I'm sorry, Delta Sigma Theta, Zeta, Phi Beta, and Sigma Gamma Rho, uh, college-based fraternities and sororities. We also find them at the NAACP and Urban League. Now, I know some people on this page may be part of that organization. And you may say, man, I'm not no boule. I just joined the fraternity. I'm not part of any of that. You may not be part of the boule. You may not be. Not to say that you are, but... I'm telling you what was created, why it was created, and why all these fraternities have ties to the boule. Not to say that you are. You may be in it, but you may not be tied in like that. You may not be willing to do the things that they willing to do to sell out black people to be in it. So I don't want to just indict everybody just in case you in a fraternity. Because you know, some of y'all in these fraternities, y'all get real you know, bothered. Like you're talking about your kids when you mention the fraternities. I'm just saying. So they say now Du Bois was one of the strongest opponents of Marcus Garvey, and he was an instrumental tool in stopping one of the strongest grassroots movements in the century. What was Garvey's plan, right? We all know this. His plan was to take as many Africans from America and start a settlement in the nation of Liberia, and then help the new nation produce and control their own rubber crops and other industries in natural resources, okay? So Marcus Garvey, he stated, that if the oil of Africa is good for Rockefeller's interest, if iron is good for Carnegie in trust, then these minerals are good for us. Why should we allow Wall Street and the capitalist group of America and other countries exploit our country when they refuse to give us a fair chance in the countries of our adoption? That's the same thing I talk about today is that you got China in Africa, the United States won't get out, Russia want to be in, everybody want to be in Africa, getting all the resources. Well, what about black Americans? Why aren't we there even making any kind of business? I've talked about this so many times. Marcus Garvey continues to say, why should not Africa give to the world its black Rockefeller, Rothschild and Henry Ford? He's right. Marcus Garvey understood that we cannot be a people without any kind of power. Wealth brings power and the wealth is in Africa. Here you're going to be sabotaged. Look at all the black men that get money. What happens to them in the end a lot of times? 
it don't end well. Didn't Eddie Griffin say on Vlad TV that they always got to have an asterisk by your name because they either got to dirt you up or destroy you on any little thing. That's why when you black men get certain amounts of money, you need to already have your escape plan out of this country because eventually they may come for you. And when you even get wind of, you can say, man, I'm out. I'm not going to put up with these people. Now they said the two house Negroes made a bet that whites will come out on top and give a certain percentage of these greedy Negroes named Boule members, the wealth they stole from Africa, right? So they say what's deep is that they didn't believe in African self-reliance and preferred to have whites give them table scraps instead of making the whole pie. Now you have to understand the boule represents the weakest element of black people. Understand that they are the Steven of Django Unchained. You understand that's them. They will protect the master. They will do everything they can. They'll fight with other black people and also deceive other black people. Now, as Steve Coakley put it, he said it took a certain type of, well, he said N word to form an organization like this. He said, I mean, we just got our, you know what, kicked during reconstruction. Africa was divided before our very eyes with the Berlin conference. Most of you who know about that. And he said, and this was 50 years before Rosa Parks. And I said, the question is why were these black devils like this? That's what he said. He said, the answer may lie in the fact that the boule is a Greek organization. And I said that on Twitter, they got mad at me. I said, why you got black people joining the Greek organizations? You can't make an African organization or even a black American organization. Cause Greek that's, you know, white folks. What, what, what's up with that? Oh, they get, they say, Oh, he's super woke. Oh boy. Boy. They was mad at me when I made that comment on Twitter. So continue. He said it was about selling out brothers and sisters for power and money. Yes. That's what the boule is about. They do not want to see us come up. See all this talk about ADOS and, and, and black folks, uh, breaking away from the democratic party. Oh no, that's bothering the boule because they are the house Negroes. Every last one of them. Now I say the majority are black lawyers, doctors, engineers, and accountants were members of the secret club. Now I'm not saying all black lawyers and accountants is part of the boule. Not saying that, but they say traditionally the people that's in it is a tie to that. Okay. And I say the boule is another arm of the fairy secret societies that recruit, indoctrinate, and call for the dark forces. Now, you know, for me, dark force is the devil, Satan. And there's a lot of Satan in America. You don't believe me? Go to vacation outside this country. I just talked to, um, it was on, I was on a live stream, Nyla's in Mexico and her and Taz is in Mexico right now. And uh, you don't know Nyla and Taz, where well, they make content. They're in Mexico and she said she finally understand what I meant last year is that when I got out of America, I felt that weight off my shoulders. I felt like at peace. I feel happy because it's a strong demonic spirit over America. And until you get out, that's the only time you really feel what I'm talking about. So they said there are perks galore, power and notoriety are lying in wait for the easily compromised soul. So these people not only sold out the black community, but they're selling their soul to white supremacy, you understand? And that is the worst part out of it all. Okay, so in the Greek system, the boule was the lower house of the parliament, charged with organizing the affairs of the city of the king. So let so think about that for a minute, right? Now this is an ancient story. It said the new world order is the old world order. The elite blacks of the boule are culling and controlling their own for a slice of the elite white man's pie. That's what it is. They want table scraps from white supremacy. Let's talk about that. They want those CNN jobs. See what happened. Roland got out of pocket talking about the gay community. Understand on CNN. That's why he's out of there. He broke the rules. You can't talk about LGBT. Oh, no, no, no. Because most of them are tied in with that. So he broke the rule. And ever since then, he'd be trying to get in good graces to get back in. You should see him. He is sad. So they say the, the takeaway folks is that, Black society is modeled on white and most political business and cultural leaders are chosen on the basis of their membership in a satanic secret society. We all have been betrayed by the most egregious fashion. A lot of them in this secret society, uh, members have, you know, such idols that they have touching our aspects of daily lives of black folks, including children. 
is a, absolutely mind blowing, staggering, and continues to grow. It's estimated 70 to 75% of all black male lawyers are members of the secret society, Sigma Pi Phi. Virtually every black mayor, congressman, banker, or millionaire in America are members of the secret society of Boule. Now, that has been traditionally how it is. Do I believe all of them are part of it? No, but then as I was doing research, I saw Cedric the Entertainer, as I put in Boulay on Twitter, and he was talking about, oh, look, you know, we, we had the Boulé, uh, 68 annual Boulé uh, convention and this and that. I said, oh, okay, and he was all excited. And of course, he's an entertainer, right? So Steve Coakley, the ultimate source on the information of Boulé, he said his persistent theme is that the Jewish financial elite has put a phony black leadership class in position of wealth and influence. Okay, this is what Steve Coakley said. He said their roles to protect sponsors and perpetuate the hegemony. All right, so genuine leaders like Malcolm X and Martin Luther King, who forgot their place, are eliminated. You know, so people who fought for the 90%, like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, um, Mega Evers, anybody who fought for the people, they always been a threat and they always try to take you out. Now, I say, ironically, Steve was hospitalized back in 2012 when he expressed the fears that they would kill him in a hospital. And he said this appears to have taken place. He was married, had three children. They say the late conspiracy theorists, that's what they call him at the time. Steve Coakley had this to say anywhere they are prominent professional blacks, chances are they in the blue lay. Okay. Now, I've heard this before. I'm saying this is what I've heard. And he, he's saying that he thinks Martin Luther King and Jesse Jackson have been Boulay members, among many other high profile, successful, and money blacks, such as Barack Obama, Bill Cosby, Al Sharpton, and Thurgood Marshall. But remember, Martin Luther King could have been in it, but he broke the rules, so he was taken out. Understand? He fought for the 90%. Maybe when he was in the beginning younger, he could have been. But he see that wasn't the right. He fought for his people. He did everything he could and lost his life, you know, for it. Right now, Malcolm X, of course, he had nothing to do with that. You know, the nation of Islam and Elijah Muhammad. You already know they don't get down nothing like that. So they said the Boule. This is something else you need to think. The members of the Boule pose as freedom fighters or civil rights activists on the surface. Hence, I keep bringing a Roland because he comes himself like that. He says he fighting for the people, he's standing up, he talks about racism, etc. right? But at the end of the day, Roland don't be talking about anything that affect them folks. He's not gonna offend them, anything. Look at Roland's YouTube channel, let's mention that. He don't get views, he don't. He don't get super chats. Yet Roland leaves TV One and gets a whole nice studio set up. Trust me, I know the cost of that. So where the money come from? Out of thin air? Roland not a millionaire like that. He hasn't been on network TV in a long time. Now network TV can pay you good money if you like the Don Lemons or, um, you know, who else? Anderson Coopers or uh, Rachel Maddow's or, you know, the new main host, uh, Laura Ingram on Fox, they making money. But Roland isn't there, so who's supporting him, right? So they said, in true, the elite members of the operating uh, for personal gain. The Boule works in concert with their masters in maintaining a group of Illuminati or white, I call it white supremacy, cause that's all it is, just devil men and white supremacy on their people. So the Boule is another arm of the Pharisee society they recruit and doctrinate it as we talked about before. Now they said that as continuing, also the Boule, and he talked about this too, cause like I said, we talking about this here, like other secret societies, encourages LGBTQ practices, okay? They say this must be done to join the ranks, like the higher ranks. Now remember Tupac, remember Tupac? He had talked about Quincy Jones had wanted him to do an LGBTQ act on him, and he was like, hell no, you know how Tupac was. And you know, they said that, that's the thing they, they would want done to move up in these ranks in Hollywood, uh, uh, the music industry, especially them two industry. I know many of y'all heard that. Remember Pimp C when he's before he died, he said he was about he was about to out everybody. That was that was all you know doing that behind the scenes, and then all of a sudden Pimp C, all of a sudden he's drinking lean inside of a hotel, and he isn't here anymore. Okay, he was about to out whoever he was about to out. I don't know who he was about to out because he was talking about certain rappers. You think that's you know straight? They're not. All right. 
So he said that continuing these perversions are then cataloged and stored on record. Later, if needed, these abuses may be used as bargaining tools in the ultimate game. So they say, what is the ultimate game? Capturing human souls. The enemy may appear to have a white face, but it goes much deeper than that. You got to think about when it comes back to Marcus Garvey, they had made a bet that whites will come out on top and give a certain percentage, you know, to the boule members, right? And then they said from the wealth they stole of Africa. So anytime you're talking about Pan-Africanism, or even if you're talking about ADOS, or you're talking about, you know, uh, going against these black members of the CBC, you all messing with their checks. Because, you know, in the boule, they gotta perform. And if they do not perform by being that talented 10th, controlling 90%, white supremacy gonna get rid of them. They say, look, you are no earthly good. Why would you even, why would you even be around us like this? Why? You have no use to us in this society, okay? So they also talked about Boulay membership with some very interesting names. Out of the list, they mentioned Dr. Daniel Hale Williams. He performed the first open heart surgery. Ralph Bunch, he's the former UN ambassador, Arthur Ashe. You remember him, the great tennis player, Urban League president at the time, Whitney Young. Uh, they mentioned Martin Luther King at the time, Benjamin Mays, Carter G. Woodson, John H. Johnson, Maynard Jackson, the ex-mayor of Atlanta. Okay, all who died, never speaking of the boule and therefore taking the secrets of white supremacy with them. They talked about Hank Aaron, Tom Bradley, uh, Dennis Archer, the former mayor of Detroit, Elvin Big E. Hayes, he mentioned Bill Kaiser, Jason Jackson, Earl Graves, Douglas Wilder, um, Lynn Swan, and David Dinkins, ex-mayor of New York City. Most Boulé members of the successful group. As Coakley put it, yes, Boulé is in your town. Anywhere there are prominent professional blacks, chances are they're in the Boulé. And the great thing about today is we see it. It's not like it's hidden like it used to be. Understand that. So if you look at the logo that they have, they say, most say it's a sphinx, right? They said, but most will associate the sphinx with a tail, a solid block stature of our, our ancestors built in Kemet. But it said, because we have been conditioned except without question, we never thought of looking up the word sphinx means, right? So looking in a dictionary will tell you that the sphinx is a third part woman, one part eagle, one third lion. They say, notice the breast and wings. So when you think of the tall statue in Kemet, does it look like a woman? Well, the breast. What about the wings? The original African name is Her M. Akahit. If I'm saying it right, make sure I'm saying it right. It's a which means Huru of the horizon and has the face of a builder. Okay. When we look at the definition of Sphinx, it means to strangle, guard, gatekeeper, or protect. You know, all these black politicians, especially them, these black people in media, they're gatekeepers. All of them are gatekeepers. And we have to brand every single one of them as gatekeepers because they're preventing black people from being free. And when we talk about this, we have to push that message that all of them are gatekeepers, just as much as Al Green is a gatekeeper, Sheila Jackson Lee is a gatekeeper. Um, Elijah Cummins, all of them are gatekeepers, right? So according to the Greeks, they said this beast was the guardian of the city of Thebes. So she sat on the cliff on the path leading to the city. So anyone they wanted to enter Thebes had to first confront the Sphinx. The Sphinx would ask one simple riddle. If you didn't know the answer, she would devour you, tearing you to pieces. Okay. So they say the king, Creon, was upset that many people weren't able to enter his city. He consulted a homosexual named Oedipus. Notice homosexuality was the norm in Grecian culture. That's true. If you study that, you know that. All the things they did with boys and all that, and, and that was their culture. That wasn't African culture. That was European culture. So they say the king offered his crown, his daughter, if he could kill the Sphinx. So he bounced to where she was and she asked him the riddle, what has one voice and goes out on four feet, on two feet and on three, but the more feet it goes on the weak period B. Oedipus responded, man, who crawls on all fours as a baby, then walks on two as an adult and walks on a cane old age. After answering the riddle correctly, the Sphinx committed suicide by jumping off the cliff 
and Oedipus would claim the king of thieves for outsparting the beast. Okay, so we're just talking about uh, history, etc. Now they said the statue faced to the east because our ancestors knew the pineal gland is the seat of the African soul, and when the sun rises in the east, it hits the forehead pineal gland, suppressing the beastly nature of man. Okay, that's just kind of like what the uh, belief system is. Black leaders. And you always talk about somebody as a leader, right? That comes from white America. They give you your leaders. And they say the black leaders white America gave us, right? Actually had an allegiance to white supremacy. We know this. This is why you don't want to be branded as a leader. You notice we say, I ain't no leader because they always trying to label a black person a leader. Oh, you're a leader. She's a leader. No, 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 nobody no leader. We all part of a one community, right? So back in the 1900s, when we weren't even 40 years out of slavery, the house f Negro, Phil Negro mentality uh, was still in existence. Most Africans at that time had gone through so much self denial. The old cliche, if you're black, get back. If you're brown, stick around. If you're yellow, you're mellow. And if you're white, you're all right. It was rampant and most of our ancestors lost themselves from bleaching their skin, cooking their hair, and speaking civilized in order to be seen different than the field Negro. So yes, you know, bleaching of the skin was going on way back then. You have to understand that. So they say you also have to realize that most of our co-founders of the black organizations were mulattoes of very light skin. They say these house Negroes also felt that they were better than dark skinned blacks, colorism, right? And we know about that. A lot of quote unquote mulattoes uh, at that time period was definitely trying to make sure they in the legions with racism and white supremacy. And so they went on their way to prove to whites they were different because we were now free. Whites still need to keep an eye on us. They needed an overseer. This is why at the same time as the founding of the Boule, we found that the founding of the NAACP and Urban League, these black organizations were co-founded by, you know, Jewish spies who used the boys as a scapegoat. One of the co-founders of the NAACP, um, he was also very influential in founding the Boule. His name was Joel Spingar, okay? And a lot of us didn't know about these organizations. We thought they fought for the people, but a lot of them was tied in. Look at the NAACP today. What do they do? The NAACP don't do anything. The Urban League don't do anything, but they say they're fighting for black people. They want to make sure to put someone extremely light-skinned in the leadership. Have you noticed that? No different than this here today. I'm just making sure I point that out to you. So they said that they see that the NAACP doesn't even own the building of the national headquarters is located at. They say with all the loot the NAACP gets annually, they still have to pay rent to a building. That's because they have to answer to someone, which is the white supremacy system, um, who's the major fundraiser. They say while we were being lynch raped, they say we thought these organizations would help fight for justice later to find out our leaders answer to the very one with the blood on their hands. That's why a lot of people say Al Sharpton and all them other ones. Like how is it that they still get to run around and yet Al Sharpton got a job? You know, if, if nothing told you anything when Al Sharpton got a job at MSNBC, how you fight against racism and white supremacy but they could offer you a job at MSNBC? What's up with that, right? So they said if you look at the boule closely, you find a confusion of values. So they say black men who felt their advancement was edged upon positive relationship with wealthy and influential white people. And at the same time, they have an inverse adverse impact on our revolution. Okay. Also stated boule means advisor to the king. You gotta remember that. Now the boule to wrap up have taken a sworn oath to maintain the state of white supremacy and to never let you know that whites rule the world. But now the cat's out of the bag. We know about racism, white supremacy. They can't do that anymore, uh, but they have a house Negro mentality and they want to make sure that white supremacy maintains in the earth. This is why if you look at the Haitian revolution back in 1804, the Haitians dealt with the house Negro first. That's what they, they didn't go after the French. They dealt with them first because they know if we didn't deal with them, they're going to come back and they're going to destroy what we're trying to do is get free. Okay. So the boule, these black leaders, all that, they must be highly rejected. 
This talented 10th Negro mentality must be highly rejected. We must be suspect of any of them as part of a Greek organization. We must just be suspect until you prove to us that you're not part of anything. As I stated before, we get in deep into where white supremacy works. And some of y'all join fraternities, I know, to say, well, it, it, it get, it, you join fraternities to maybe have a sense of belonging. You, you feel you kind of person need to be a part of a club or, you know, you, it may be certain advantages, but think about it. Why is it an advantage to join a fraternity? Why you got to join a fraternity instead of just joining with your people? Why can't you do that? Why have you separated yourself into some Greek organization to do something? I'm saying, just think about it a little bit. Why is it that you're getting advantage? versus the other black college students that didn't get a part of this organization. I'm just saying, think about this a little bit. Think about what I'm saying here. This is not a condemnation to nobody that's in a fraternity. I'm just saying, think about a little bit, the motivations to, as to why you join, right? So the boule itself, you know, that they get the high paid salaries, they can get their own businesses. You know, they're allowed to, to be successful in America. I mean, you know, and, and, and at the end of the day, they businesses get swallowed up by white people. Think about that. When you part of this boule, as long as they keep tabs on black people, as long as they prevent black progress and they come to us, act like, oh yeah, we fight against racism. That's racist. And listen, the white liberals say other oh, white people are racist, but would they change the system of inequality? when they change the system of you being murdered in the street for anything. No, they won't change the system. And neither will the boule Negroes change that at all. The boule Negro must be rejected and he must have, or and she must have no voice. Kamala Harris is a boule Negro. Trust me. Did you see the current, um, article talking about she was going to go uh, with her sorority sisters That's boule because she feel I, I need, now I need to lean on the boule to help me out in my campaign. But see, it's not enough boule members to help Kamala Harris. See, you gotta deal with the 90%. That, that, that talented tenth is not in, in numerous enough for you to win no election. And you have no influence anymore, boule. You don't. You are, I'm gonna have to repeat Trump, you are enemy of black people. You are enemy of the people. The black boule. Every last one of y'all is the enemy of the people. And that's how we also got to brand you as well. You're gatekeepers and you're enemy to black America because you in high and step with racism and white supremacy. You don't want us free whatsoever. And we got to call you out every chance we get. So, you know, ladies and gentlemen, I know this is kind of like a longer video. We had to talk about the boule because the boule is extremely dangerous and they only in it for themselves. They get little Negro trinkets while the rest of us get bullets, the rest of us getting gentrified, the rest of us getting a bunch of race soldiers while they living very, very good. And how is it they live so good and the kids live so good in a system and nothing happens to them? But yet they talk, how is it they talk about racism but white people don't hate them? Think about that for a minute. Because usually white folks will start hating you and you start speaking the truth. But you could talk about racism all day and you don't have no hate. You at all these little events, you speaking here, speaking there. How do you get access to all that? How? Cause you part of the boule. But the time of the black boule is over. It is over. And thank God it's over. You have no relevance in black America. You don't control black America anymore. We are global now. We're connecting, you know, with our brothers and sisters now. And, and yes, some of you even allow black immigrants into the boule as well but they tell on themselves a little bit faster than maybe you do. Okay. Because they don't come from here. So they don't know how to fake it as well and blend into black America. But the boule is done and we're going to make sure to call you boule members out every chance we get. So when you hear me in the commentary is talking about this person's boule, this person's a gatekeeper, this person is an enemy to black America. Trust me, they really are because they don't want to see us free in any way, shape or form.